Welcome to another presentation from the CV Academics Foundation, home of the AMP Honors Program. Hi, AMP Honors Program. My name is Taylor LaChapelle. Um, most of you probably know me, but I am one of your super mentors here on the platform. Um, I'm here today with Dr. Vavra. Um, he is on our board. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself um, and kind of what you do? Sure. Well, um, I'm a physician, a podiatric physician uh, through Walkshire Memorial Hospital primarily. Um, I am a sports medicine um, enthusiast. I also run the wound clinic uh, part-time uh, at the hospital where I handle uh, all the foot and ankle wounds that come through our clinic, most of them. And then my partner, Dr. Galati, also handles uh, some of the wounds there as well. Um, we have uh, practice throughout Waukesha County. There's seven offices that we timeshare uh, through different places. And then we have a main office in Pewaukee. Um, we've been doing podiatry wound care uh, for the last 10 years. So we really stepped up our game from a standpoint of bringing on more uh, wound care advances uh, and that's really where I generate most of my time and effort now um, in that field because of our heavy diabetic population in this area. So, right. so what do you um, do as a podiatrist? Like, what is podiatry? So, podiatry is anything that has to do with foot and ankle, whether it's dermatological problems such as warts, uh, ingrown toenails, calluses, uh, to uh, injuries. Um, plantar fasciitis, heel pain, people with Achilles tendon problems, running injuries, uh, foot wounds will be part of our diabetic um, uh, scenario where we see a lot of patients who have no feeling in their feet, they develop a, an open sore that we have to treat. Um, but we're basically a family practice doctor as well as a surgeon for the foot and ankle. Okay. Um, so how did you become interested in podiatry? Well, I did what you're doing right now is I did some job shadowing. I, I shadowed uh, dentists. I, sh I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare field. I was a biochemistry double major at Carroll, and I, but I knew I didn't want to be a research uh, person. So I, I knew I wanted, I, I was a people person. I liked hanging around with people. So I, I knew I, wanted, I just didn't know what type of doctor I wanted to be. But when I spent time in Indiana with two podiatrists, and I called me odd couple because one was super you know, neat, and the other, his brother was super, you know, sloppy, but they worked well together, and, and it was a fun environment. I had a blast working there. I was able to um, work with them, see what it was like to have a family life, as well as being a physician, um, being able to go to the operating room, as well as seeing patients in the office, seeing everything from little babies all the way up to 90, you know, year old patients. So uh, it, was a, it was a great, uh, great fit for me. That's awesome. Um, so you touched on it a little bit, um, your education at Carroll. So what was kind of your path to get where you are now? So when I went to Carroll for my undergrad, then I, um, uh, after and I took my MCATs, and I ended up going and getting into uh, Show, which is now Roslyn Franklin University um, for podiatry school. Um, I did my four years there. Um, and then after that, I did my residency here in Wisconsin, which led me to meet Dr. Petr Carlo. Uh, he was the residency, one of the residency directors. He hired me right out of residency, and then him and I grew a practice for 10 years um, in Waukesha County, and then we started bringing on other doctors uh, to join us. Uh, and we brought on Dr. Santa Cola, that's where we really got into more healthcare because, and more wound care, rather than because he was a wound care doctor out of, uh, he was out in Colorado with a lot of wound care mm -hmm. and hyperbaric treatments. And then that's when we brought the hyperbaric treatments here to Waukesha. So we do, you know, wound care. We, we put people in hyperbaric chambers to help heal their wounds. Um, so so uh, the hyperbaric chamber, can you describe that? So the hyperbaric chamber is a closed chamber. It's like going deep sea diving and you get compressed with 100% oxygen, um, which basically allows the molecules to shrink and get into tighter spaces and getting oxygen in those tighter spaces mm -hmm. to kill the bacteria. Uh, bacteria love to grow in an anabolic environment. They like to grow where there's very little oxygen. 
um, and when there's no oxygen to an area, the tissue will die and the bacteria will feed off that. Um, we give oxygen to that area, and if there's enough perfusion and blood flow, then the wounds can heal without IV antibiotics. You can kill a bug just by giving it a ton of oxygen. Okay. okay. Um, so, what does kind of a day in the life look like for you? Every day is a little different. I mean, some days I'm just seeing patients, other days I'm, I'm in the operating room, other days I'm in the wound clinic, other days I'm here at the lab um, seeing patients uh, for gait assessments and making custom insults. Um, so it's every day is a little a little different when I wake up. I gotta remember what day it is so I know where I'm going. <laughs> going. Yeah. What kind of careers are available for um, in podiatry? Well, in podiatry, you can you can be a a didactic, just a, a doctor who can work in the hospital now and almost be a hospitalist uh, podiatrist. They have roles in. There's some. Uh, Obviously, you can be a teacher, you can go into teaching, but once you're in practice, you have to decide what type of practice you want to be. You can be a surgical practice, you can be a, a, a practice that helps mostly just elderly people and, and helps just cutting their toenails and, and calluses and making diabetic shoes and insoles. Um, so you don't always have to be a surgeon if you don't want to. Um, but it seems like more and more podiatric residencies are leaning toward um, the surgery and the rear foot reconstructive surgery and things like that. So uh, they're on par with any orthopedic surgeon, uh, foot and ankle that you'll find. The guys coming out now, I think they're even better qualified um, because they do three years of just foot and ankle and they're doing trauma centers and, and things like that. So Awesome. How long did you say you've been practicing? Uh, this is my 27th year. Okay. So I've been practicing yeah, since 94 when I started wow. practicing. So throughout those years, um, has there what has been kind of your least favorite or favorite um, part um, about? Least favorite's always changing to, from a standpoint of all the technology changes that have happened, and it it, de it definitely used to be a lot easier. You know, we could just dictate uh, a note, and it would go and go on a chart, and it would just print out, and you'd be done. You'd see that patient. You make your recommendations. You you do your dictation. You send a super bill off to whatever you charged, and you were good to go. And then technology got involved, and it's, there's a lot more charting. There's a lot more time on the computer. Um, so that that can be daunting at times, especially you know. Luckily, I grew up in that era where computers were just going, and I had my own computer, and I understood the technology. But there's a lot of Guys that, you know, the older guys that, you know, got sort of stuck and, mm -hmm. and a lot of them, you know, there's that's the reason why a lot of doctors have retired early even because they just didn't want to deal with, I can't learn another <laughs> new, mm -hmm. new computer program and it just it, right. it got too overwhelming. Yeah. Um, and your favorite? Oh, my favorite right now is, is definitely my wound care and healing the wounds. I mean, there's no question. I mean, what we do at the lab here by offloading wounds and getting them to heal and preventing amputations, um, those patients are so satisfied compared to someone who just wants an elective hammer toe or bunion corrected. I mean, you can do a great job and there'll be a little scar and you might still have someone saying, well, this is still not exactly where I want it, but when you prevent a foot from being amputated, the uh, the emotional outpouring is, is great and, and it's very satisfying to prevent, you know, someone from losing their leg. Yeah. So. I bet. Um, has there anything, uh, like a procedure you've done that's been like the coolest thing you've been able to do? Yeah, just, the, just recently we did a, a ankle re reconstruction on a, on a ligament, um, very much what they're doing with the rotator cuff and, and that type of thing with uh, fiber wire and fiber tape and um, very um, incredible, you know, quick procedure, you know, um, minimally invasive, and to be able to repair the entire ligament structure after he blew out all, you know, three ligaments on his lateral ankle, and we were able to repair them and give him stability back. And he's a super athlete, so he's gonna be able to go back 100%. And awesome. so yeah, he's, he's already walking on it at four weeks post-op, having no pain. 
Uh, the therapist has already sent me pictures of how he's doing. Bap's he's already very stable, so. Wow. Yeah, that was that was definitely that was cool. I bet it's amazing. You've already touched on this a little bit, but can you discuss more um, some of your podiatry roles and then how they vary depending on the setting or um, who you're working with? So like an athlete or diabetic patient or elderly? Yeah, so on, a, on any given day, you'll have, a, you'll have a, a host of patients that come in just for simply, you know, a callus or routine nail care, but then you'll have an athlete come in um, and you have to be able to change ears very quickly and, and be able to you know focus on their gait assessment and uh, and get and try to figure out mechanically what's going on with them and why they're having the pain that they're having or or the injury that they had look at their flexibility look at their gait are they over pronated they were supinated look at their shoes so you do have to be able to change gears very quickly every single room you walk in on a given day it's going to be something different which is really what makes my profession great you're not seeing the same thing ever, you know, it's every day you're seeing a host of five or six different challenging things. Um, and days that you do get a, a bunch of routine stuff, it's actually not a bad day. You kind of, really? okay, see, I don't have to think too much. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you, you, do become, you do become mentally exhausted at the end of a long day. You really do in, in our field because you're always trying to, you know, fine tune what's going on with that patient. And, and with little, I don't take very many x-rays. I All my stuff is self-assessed, palpation. Um, I'll take x-rays when, it, when it's warranted, but I probably take the least amount of x-rays out of anyone I know, even in my own practice, so. Wow. Um, and so, if someone wanted to specialize more in a certain age group or area, they could, right? They could, I mean, there are, there are some podiatry practices that are primarily surgery, where they almost run their office like an orthopedic practice. Okay. Um, they don't do the orthotics, they don't do, you know, they just do injections and they do x-rays and they talk surgery. And then there's, you know, we're pretty much full service. We do everything at our office. We, we, you know, there's not anything that we don't do. I always feel like if you're gonna go into podiatry, you might as well be able to, you know, if you're just specializing in the foot and ankle, you should be able to do anything with the foot and ankle. And that means treating warts to, you know, treating Achilles tendon ruptures, so. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with the students on the platform? Well, all that, the, the one thing is obviously there's going to be a shortage um, in nursing and podiatry and in the healthcare field because of our aging population. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's good for anyone that's not thinking of going into healthcare. Um, and obviously getting a step up on people by going through the AMP website is going to help them understand what, you know, what's going to be involved going forward so that when they do get into it, they're fully committed and, and they're not going to waste their time and, and resources. So that's, that's the biggest thing. Is that's always a challenge is you don't want to go into something and then be $300,000 in debt and not know when you're going to ever get that paid back. So you, you don't want to make the wrong choices. So you know, being able to figure that out earlier is key. All right. Um, any words of advice? Well, my biggest word of advice for anyone that going into medicine is you just have to have a passion. You have mm -hmm. to, you, you can't do it for the money. You know, the, the money, there is rewards there, you know, for you, but it really has to be your, you know, you have to be empathetic. You have to, you have to really have a passion for it um, to help people because Otherwise, if, if, it, if you're thinking you're going to go into it to get rich, it's not the reason you want healthcare. Yeah. So you'll get rich with rewards with, and hugs from patients. That's that's where you get your rich and your, you know, your rewards. Is, that's the best. Yeah. Better than a paycheck. So. That's awesome. Um, well, thank you for your time. Um, you. We appreciate uh, your time for the platform and everything that you do for us. Thank you. Here at yeah, it's been great. This has been a presentation of the CV Academics Foundation, home of the AMP Honors Program.